Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for another Dad Bod to Daddy Transformation Vlog. So, today is shoulder day. I started off with a seated press. Uh, even though uh, my side and rear delts get more total attention in this workout, I do like to do a little bit of front delt work, and I've decided to work on overhead pressing again because I at least have the shoulder range of motion now to do so pain-free. Um, I still can't get to the lockouts completely, so one of the reasons I'm debating if I wanna just keep doing them seated uh, versus standing, because I don't really get the advantage of the standing so much you know, if I can't lock out since I, you know, so bringing the torso forward. And that's just a, a, a shoulder range of motion issue. Um, the 135, I'm trying to keep these top first sets on most of the exercises really heavy, uh, like the benching, the squatting, the deadlifting, everything. So I'm treating this the same way. So I want to get at least five reps. I don't want to be much higher than five to six. So since I got seven pretty easy, I went with this. Um, I also, so I went up 20 pounds. Uh, it's only my second week doing these for, for a very, very long time. Um, I tried a false grip there just to see if, I, if it felt better, but I was actually stronger when I took a full grip because I couldn't get that fifth rep on that one. It just stuck right there in the middle, and I managed to get it better on the fifth rep with this, so even fatigued after that set, did a little bit better. So I'm going to continue to stick with a full grip on the bar. Um, again, some of it's just allowing you a little more shoulder rotation, but in this case, I just get better neural drive, just like on the bench, if I squeeze it super hard. Uh, and also, for those curious, yes, I'm still slowly cutting. I added carbs back in, so my weight went up a few pounds. I've been hovering about 215, 216, but I was on up at like 228 uh, before I started this cutting. So um, I can totally live with that, totally live with that. Uh, even though I was down to 212 on lower carbs, but that's okay. I feel like I look I look fuller. Um, my workouts are a little bit better, so I'm just going to live with that. Um, so keeping the carbs a little bit higher. Diet is still very much protein dominant, uh, but I'm, I've added you know a couple hundred grams of clean carbs in every day over what I had been eating. So I was eating around anywhere from 50 to 100 grams for a little while, and maybe drop a bunch of water. So since I've added that back in. Uh, Again, I picked up a little bit of water weight, but it looks like all muscle, muscle water. Uh, a little bit of water around the waist, but keep in mind we also have the loose skin there, so it's going to tend to hold extra water until I lose that fat that is stuck to that loose skin. And then I think everything will tighten up. So upright rows, I've, I got stronger on these. Um, even doing them really, really strict, I got 12 reps. I'm like, let me step the weight up. I went up 20 pounds, got nine. I'm like, let's just go with 135. Let's see if we can get the actual same range of motion, uh, same control with no cheating, and I managed to get six. So pretty happy with that. Uh, these really burned my shoulders a lot. My shoulders were, were feeling a really good beating at this point. Side delts lit up on these. Uh, front delts, I felt them a lot, and the whole upper chest. I felt my chest quite a bit, and it could be because I'm at a slight incline on that seated press. But I think the other thing too, because for me, I feel like uh, the incline is such an important supplemental lift for my benching, my benching will come back up in spite of the cutting based on the incline. And I feel like that those seated presses or any overhead press uh, is still gonna improve my incline bench. So that's another reason to do it. Yeah, it helps with the shoulder aesthetics, but that incline is really important for I think improving aesthetics as well as improving my weak spot on my bench press. But I'd like to get that bench back up to where I could bench, you know, 315 for solid work sets, you know, at least five reps, right? At least five reps, but I want to be able to do it flat back and with the wide grip now, not the, the powerlifting style I had been doing. Um, and I can always go back to powerlifting style if I want to set a big bench. So we did our three sets of that. Then I went ahead and got, sticking with the same weight, but I got at least 10 reps on every set this time. So shoulders are, are getting stronger. But I think adding the carbs carbs in over a week ago really, really helped with that tremendously because I, I did more work before, you know, a lot of times I only was doing one exercise before these, now I'm doing two, and I'm getting at least 10 reps on all these sets with this weight, uh, so very happy with it. Um, this I feel almost entirely side dealt when I do these, um, you know, irrespective of people didn't like or dislike whatever form you're using, I feel because of the slight forward lean, it really puts more emphasis there because I don't want to get too much more front delt in there because I get so much of it with the first exercises. Uh, then afterwards, I'm like, well, let's do some shrugs. And normally I don't do a lot of shrugs. This weight was too heavy. It was becoming a grip issue. So I, I took it down. I'm like, look, I need to be able to just squeeze this really hard. 
and if I have to use a lighter weight, I use a lighter weight. It's like I've already done three shoulder exercises, so my traps are a little fatigued. Let's just rep out 225, and sure enough, we got like 11 reps or something. So I'm just going to count it as 3 by 10 plus with this. I'm just going to pretend that 275 was 225 for my notes purposes, because it, it's too heavy on the grip, at least with this bar. And I don't want to break out a deadlift bar to do shrugs. And it's because of the overhand grip. But man, anyone who says, why don't you just use straps? Because I want my grip and forearms to always be improving. I like having grip work in every day. And you guys know my rule, if you can't lift it without equipment, you can't lift it. Notice I'm doing everything wrong. I am literally wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. Some of the leg exercises I wear shoes and socks. I am down to just shorts. So this is all as raw as can be. Um, I like that training philosophy. I don't believe in using lifting equipment unless you, you have a reason to do it. And there could be cases of neural drive and there could be reasons for lifting heavier weights. But right now I'm trying to just do this, uh, you know, just raw, just trying to build muscle, right? I'm not worried about neural drive and per perfect bracing like I was in power lifting. So, you know, I'm just running with it. So rear delt raises, I tried to make these a little stricter. So I just do these bent over and seated to make them a little stricter. I did supersets of my hanging leg raises in between. Uh, which you guys know why we do that. As I say in every vlog, I always do them near the end. I try to do anywhere from one to one or two, sometimes three sets. Uh, the only thing is I'm trying to get around 10 sets for abs every week. Uh, but the hanging leg raises, they've helped tremendously with my shoulder mobility. They're one of the tools that I use. Those pullovers are a big deal. So this will improve things like my pull-ups. It gives me grip training every single day on top of whatever other grip I've done in addition to being a good out exercise. Now, I've had a few people come in and say, you're not working your abs on this. And it's like, I respectfully disagree. I am flexing the abs at the top. So I'm crunching at the top. And then there's a huge amount of weight up there. So at that contraction, it's huge. And then they're taking an eccentric load on the way down. Yes, obviously, I'm using other muscles to help swing up. But it's the, the only way I can get enough weight on my abdominals to really get a workout. Because you guys see on crunches and band crunches and stuff. I get high reps, so when I just do normal crunches on the floor, I can do like two to 300 in a set. So this allows me to get some actual real weight on the abs without having to you know, grab a 45 or two and put it on my chest to do crunches. Uh, but yeah, the, the loose skin is still there around the waist, but I feel like it is, it is still slowly improving. And I think, uh, I think if I lose another 10 pounds of fat, I think that's gonna tighten up tremendously because that is my largest body fat stores in that area that love handle area and all of that where the loose skin still is from losing over 100 pounds many years ago. And I know that it tightens up when I drop water weight for powerlifting meat. So it's like if I just get rid of that fat there, I think it's going to tighten up a lot. It may not ever be perfect, but um, really I feel like the body fat that's still there is what's causing it. And of course, I'm disproportionately lean in other places because of it. So things like the legs, you see all that hamstring striations while still having some love handle. And it's just because of the body fat stores from that. Uh, so I did two sets of the hanging leg raises, got around 10 reps. They felt really good. Uh, of course, a lot of times my bicep day, back and bicep tomorrow, I only do one because my arms are so fatigued from the, the bicep work that I can't hold onto the bar. But again, some of this, it's like telling me this is why I need all this grip work in here. Uh, but yeah, a perfect example, you can see the hamstrings there. And then I finish off with a set of band pull-aparts just to make sure my rear delts get that last bit of contraction because I do want to make sure that they come up. Uh, so overall, super happy with today's workout. Everything went pretty well this plan. Actually, probably a little better. Uh, so very happy with it. So I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys and gals next time.